close your eyes and watch your breath. Tell yourself that this is your safe place. There's a story in the canon of a quail that goes wandering off from its safe place, and the hawk catches it. And as the hawk is carrying it away, the quail complains, Oh, if only I'd stayed in my ancestral territory, then the hawk would have been no match for me. Of course, that irritates the hawk a little bit. And so the hawk says, Well, where is your ancestral territory? And the quail says, In a field plowed up with lots of stones. And so the hawk lets the quail go. And so, Okay, go back there, but still, you'll, you'll be, you won't be able to escape me there. So the quail gets down to the field, stands on one of the stones, and says, Come get me, you hawk. Come get me, you hawk. And the hawk swoops down. And just as the, he's about to get the quail, the quail hides behind the rock, and the hawk shatters its breast on the, on the stone. In the same way, the Buddha said, when you're, when you're with your meditation, you're in a safe place. Greed, aversion, and delusion can't get you. Of course, if you wander away from the safe place, there's no, there's no guarantee, so you have to be very careful. Even as you go through the day, you want to be centered, so that whatever thoughts go out, you can see why they're going out, where they're going, and what you expect to bring back with them. And you can decide that some thoughts are just not worth following. It's not that we don't think as we go through the day. We have to think about some things, but a lot of our thinking actually tends to turn to our own detriment. So we want to be in a position where we don't have to follow everything that goes flowing out of the mind. So keep this in mind. This is your safe spot. This is your post right here. Another analogy the Buddha gives is of six animals, all tied to leashes. If you tie the leashes together, then they just go wherever, wherever the strongest animal would lead them. The crocodile will go down to the river, the bird will try to fly up to the tree, the dog will try to go into a village. And what usually happens is the crocodile drags everybody else down to the river where they all drown. But if you have a post, you can tie the animals to the leashes to the post, and they have to stay in place. They can pull and pull, but they, don't, they can't make the post move. That's how you want to be firmly established here in the present moment, with the breath as your foundation. Don't worry. Wherever things in terms of the eyes, ears, tongue, nose, body, and mind might pull you, you can resist the pull if you see that it's unskillful. That way you can go through life safely. We take refuge in the Buddha and the Dharma and the Sangha. What does that mean? It means that we try to take their qualities and bring them into our own lives. In terms of the Buddha, it's his purity and his compassion and his wisdom. We have him as an example, and that's one level of refuge, that it is possible for human beings to do this. But a deeper level comes when we're able to take his qualities and train ourselves in them. That gives you a refuge that's really strong. And this is how we begin, giving the mind a good, firm foundation right here, so you can sort out what's going on. And then remember, what if something is unskillful, what do you do with unskillful things? When things are skillful, what do you do with the skillful things? And this way you can go through life safely, not harming yourself, not harming anybody else. And that's a gift, not only to yourself, but also to the whole world. <laughs>